Hey everyone, welcome to Product Launch Hazards and our expert Brenda Creamy. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I know my voice just like went out five octaves. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I know, really, what was that? Anyway, I'm so excited for you to meet her and this is one of my favorite people to chat with about all things product and all things Amazon and we just have such a good time together. She's a really fun person. I know you're gonna really enjoy it. And what I really, why I'm really excited about you being a part of our group and that one of our experts here is that you've been there and done that. And that is really important to us here. You've struggled to find products and launch them on Amazon. You've studied, struggled to build a product business and find just the right one. And so you've had, you've been like right in the trenches learning all of this and you've become a master Amazon seller. You actually have like certification doing it. And so that's where I think there are some people in our group that aspire to be that. And there are others who just really want to have kind of a cursory understanding that maybe they don't want to do that. And so you're their go-to person for that. And that's really why you're in this group. And Brenda, you work with your husband, just like I do, and we're all yeah. friends. And so Steve and you have started AMZ Alliance and that's what you operate under. And you have a couple of brands that you run on Amazon. Is it more than one? A couple right now. I mean, yeah. we have some that we're not really building. So we have probably five or six brands, but two of our major brands. We'll talk about that because I think that's really an interesting strategy that some people are doing with multiple yeah. brands and then some are focusing on some. So, I mean, these are the kinds of insights that you bring to people and, and why you're going to be such a valuable expert for people to join in and listen to all the advice you have and ask you great questions. So one of the things that I really also wanted to highlight about you is that, is that this isn't your first business. No. So <laughs> you also understand what it's like to build a business and, and have it where you down a little bit. So yeah. let's, let's start there, you know, with that kind of background on, you know, how you began and uh, what, what was that, that flip that went, I'm going to sell on Amazon. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because it wasn't, it was more of a, a, a transition. It um, wasn't like a, a purposeful thing. It was more out of boredom, but I'm going to, I, back up a little bit and in, in my history, I've been that entrepreneur pretty much most of my life. And so I've always had my ear out for that next, you know, opportunity. So I can't tell you how many MLMs I've been in and home party thing. That was my 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 self dipping the toe into the you know, entrepreneurial world, but dipping it in with the structure behind you, so to speak. And so um, through that process, I grew and um, actually developed my own consulting company years ago um, where I was consulting with small businesses, putting systems into place. And through that process, I developed a product for one of my clients to, to, to help them with their systems. And one person after another was like, that is so cool. I want one. And so that was my first experience actually bringing a product to market. I actually created a prototype and uh, patent, went through the patent process and trade part process. Uh, mark process and this was all before Amazon so this was a very <laughs> the <exciting>. hard way <laughs> I was eaten a lot I say I like to say that I was schooled in the world of bringing products to market <laughs> so, you come from the world that many of us as experts here and that's why you're all a part of this group have that same perspective as like that's how it was this is how it is and while it's still hard if you use these principles over here, you actually can make it a lot more successful. <laughs> so. Well, and that's, I think, what's, the, what's so exciting for me to belong to this community because, um, like I said, I was schooled. And what happens with people who create products, they're very passionate about that product and they're very narrow-minded and tunnel vision. They just see that if everybody could find out that this product exists, the masses will come and, and uh, you know, I, I'm great success and riches. <laughs> and um, coming from a, way back then when I created this product, it was, I had no experience bringing a product to market and I didn't have the resources. I was out there in the trenches trying to find people to help me. And if somebody said, hey, you know, give me eight grand and I'll help launch your product. Like, oh, thank you, thank you, you're doing me a favor. I had no way of vetting them to see if they would or wouldn't. I probably spent like 20 grand bringing a product to market that I probably never should have. And so 
what's so exciting now is to be able to take all of that expertise that I have, and, and Steve as well, he brought a product to market way back before Amazon too, but um, what's so exciting is <clears throat> excuse me, bringing all of that bad information together and really trying to educate people on the sequencing of bringing a product to market. And, and not every person that goes out there and says that, you know, just give them some money and they'll make you rich is in integrity and has your best interest in mind. And one of the things that's very exciting for, for Steve and I meeting you and Tom was that here we've got some players in the industry now that are in integrity and we'll flat out tell you, yeah, this is a great idea. No, Don't you might do that. Go back to the drawing board and, and we'll be real and heartfelt with you about it. And um, so I, I really feel like we're doing a community service <laughs> by, by being resources like that, you know, so it's very exciting to be part of this platform. So thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that that's so true, though, that what you say is like, it's <clears throat> you people get really caught up in their in their thing and their what and 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 i and i get it because that it, passion it's because drives them they need it, it it is and and there's all these wonderful stories about people who didn't give up like i you know i i have to say that i i it, but i have a flip side of it so i hear the story about sarah blakely and i forget the number it was like ridiculous number almost reaching like a hundred lenders and vcs and investors she saw and they all wouldn't do it because they had no idea like an you know, what Spanx was going to become, right? And so they didn't see her vision. And, um, and I, and that frustrates me. I'd be like, oh, forget that. Just bring that thing to market. Like, it's like, it would have been faster than going that route. And so there's some of those things that you see was like, when you've got a product that's really not that difficult to make, wow, you should just go and test it. You should just go and do it, right? Because you're going to get a lot more information faster. And yet they get caught up in the process that it seems like, the old school way of having gone through, which is you get an investment or you get someone to buy in or you get someone to license it. If we could just get on Walmart or QVC. <laughs> we'd be all set. But the world has really flipped here. And I think that's really what I wanted to highlight about what you said earlier was that you've done this product, you've done MLMs, you've done this entrepreneurial world. And yet you chose to sell on Amazon, which actually came out of the digital marketing world. So it's like you, I bet you felt like you really got thrown into like some crazy stuff talking about SEO and talking about like keyword searches. And it probably felt pretty weird because it's so different from it's the different. product based world. It is different. And, and that's one of the things that um, brings us full circle to, you know, us selling on Amazon. So, um, after I was doing my consulting business and things, I had a life changing event and I needed to take a little respite. So I started managing a law firm for a couple of years and um, that just beat me up. But when you're, when you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> you, when you thought it was going to be rest. <laughs> Let's just say I was overstepping my bounds a little bit. And um, although, you know, it, it, I actually, it was, it was, it was a great experience and um, I wasn't fired. I actually, Quit, but I was made to give a year notice before. I, I mean, it took me a year to actually leave the <laughs> company, um, but I was just going insane the whole time. And so um, Steve and I talked and it's like, you know, why don't you just take a little respite and, you know, just do you know, what you want to do. So I did that. And, but that entrepreneur spirit light always shines. It isn't something that you, you may be able to dim it, but it never really goes out. And so through that process, I was noticing some, another friend that was kind of dabbling in the world of eBay and things like that. So I went down the road of like, hmm, this is kind of interesting. Let's just dabble with this a little bit. And so I started playing around on Amazon and a little bit of eBay first and doing the drop shipping methodology. And it was like, mm, that, I didn't resonate with that business model. But through that, I discovered selling on Amazon and that whole process. And this was back in 2013. So, um, it was still the wild, wild west, but it was like, it was still wide open, you know? And um, so that first year of business, we, we sold about a quarter million dollars worth of uh, product, which was very exciting. Um, when we started ramping up and, you know, we hit the 60,000, my husband's like, hey, maybe this is the business, you know? So um, to touch a little bit on your point about our business model, we started off with, was going wide in a lot of products. We were finding niches that people were 
um, that there was still demand in and we filled that demand. So we really weren't about building a brand at all um, on Amazon. So, and what would you say, what year did you start then? <clears throat> so we started selling on Amazon in 2013. So in 2013. In 2013. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a little bit different back then. It's like, you know, even over the last five years, it's, you know, migrated into being, you know, they've changed their algorithms and things have changed and that's what you found. Right. So the business model on Amazon way back then, it, 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 I, I used the terminology that, you know, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. You could find <laughs> customers, you know, people purchasing left and right. It was just very easy. But with that opportunity comes competition and the more competition that came in, um, certainly, you know, you're fighting against competition, but also Amazon is, is evolving as a platform as well for all the right things. They're, they're structuring, they're tightening up their rules and regulations, and you have to stay on top of that. So we can talk about it at some point, but um, it, there's such a huge opportunity with um, brands for Amazon. What I, what I realized coming from inventing a product and trying to bring a product to market before and realizing the ease of getting into a sales platform like Amazon, what a huge value that would be for brands. So in the old way, we went to China or wherever we did, we filled our garage full of product and then we went out there and tried to get people to buy it and we didn't have the data or the information or we didn't have the money to spend tens of thousands of dollars to marketing groups to give us this data information. Now come along Amazon and Amazon provides you that data. So it's very, very, um, it, it's very, uh, it, it's such a blessing for people who have products because they can go out and test the market on a small scale without investing their whole lives in something and they have the opportunity to tweak it. And I mean, there's, there's so many directions we can go with this talk and information, but it, it, it Amazon yeah. opened up. <laughs> and that's why you're going to be doing lots of office hours for yeah. us here because there's so many things to talk about. You yeah. know, what I think is really, really interesting. And is that, that kind of perspective of, you know, you've got this, product mindset, which is like, really wants you to make the good products succeed, right? I mean, you have, you just know how burning desire that is to impassion it is to get that, that fabulous product. And you also have the perspective of like, as a consumer, I, you get that people want better products. Like we're sick right. of the junk, right? We do want right. better products. So to not have access to them and in the old model of retail, there are big retail buyers. And for you to get an innovative product in there takes a really long time. It's really hard. It takes a lot of money. And a lot of money. And a lot of money, yeah. And a lot of sales proof and a lot of things that, you know, and, and, and so for an innovative product to break through, it's really, really hard. And this right. model is, wow, you can at least test it. Mm -hmm. You can at least sense, should I do it? Is it working? Is there a market for it? Because if there is, it's a whole lot easier to prove that to some buyer later. And right. this is such a great first step that you don't have to spend a ton of money and, um, and really get through all of that. And I, so I love that you kind of bring those two perspectives together because that's actually what we're talking about. And you and I sort of developed this model together that we call it A-B testing. And mm -hmm. so, which is a digital marketing term, by the way, right. and which is like you test ad A, and then you test ad B and you see which one does better. And then you right. dive deeper onto the ad A if it was working, right? Well, we do that same thing with product. And you and I sort of developed that mindset because what I found is that Amazon sellers want to get selling as right. fast as possible. <clears throat> and so, excuse me, I'm just like losing my voice here. Amazon <laughs> sellers want to get started as fast as possible and Inventors want to make sure it's perfect. Right, <laughs> so right. we have like the pace just isn't quite the same. So how can we really get selling and test to make sure like any key assumptions we have? And there are some big assumptions when you bring a product to market. And that's right. what I love. One of the things that you do really well, Brenda, and talk a little bit about your process for it. But you, you evaluate whether or not there's like a built-in market. Is it easy to access? And it's a right. critical part of deciding whether or not you should introduce a product. Right. We actually did a, uh, a talk at the Adventures Association here in Arizona, 
And it was just, it was such a um, heartwarming experience because it was like, gosh, I was in that chair and I wish I had somebody like me speaking to me back then. <laughs> and and um, the, the, at the very least, which is a huge thing, Amazon provides you sales data. By, by getting and selling on your product on Amazon and getting it into the hands of the consumer, you're getting real data back. You know, do they like the color? Or they're going to tell you, you know, is the price right? If the price isn't right, they're not going to be buying it. So, I mean, there's all kinds of tools in place with the Amazon Marketplace that we have at our disposal that wasn't available before that we could start measuring the data and say, okay, start, you know, selling a dozen of them, you know, send in a dozen, see what the consumer is saying, and then start tweaking the product along the way, because it's sure a heck of a lot easier to bring a product to market that people want yeah. than trying to convince people they want this product. Educate them. Yeah. Yep. Educate them is expensive and time consuming. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, I had a, just another feather in my cap of my experience. I actually owned a, a franchise for, for about three or four years. And this particular concept was a new concept. And we spent a lot, thousands and thousands of dollars trying to educate people that we were the solution to a problem. They, you know, and it was like, they didn't yeah, know they yeah. had yet. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was like, that was, again, schooled in the, you know, hard knocks of, how much easier it is to listen to the consumer, find out what they want. If you've got um, the next best gadget, awesome. But is it serving something that's in demand? Because it's, like I said, it's certainly a lot easier to sell something that people want than to try to educate them on something they're not sure they needed. And there's a whole lot of in invention and innovation improvements that are needed for the stuff people actually want. I was, I was complaining yesterday that, I had um, a, uh, I interviewed a guy who, who can wash a car with a cup of water and it's cool. And it, and he worked really hard to prove his model. He built a car wash to show people how it could happen. And, and it was, and they washed a hundred thousand cars. It was amazing. So, I mean, there's no question about it, but I was like, when is somebody like going to reinvent the washing machine, the dryer and get it to fold laundry? Cause I really want that. <laughs> and whoever does that would make a fortune. Like I want it in my kids' drawers, right? Like yeah, those exactly. are things that we really want. Why is no one working on that? Like I was like, it's yeah. great. Okay. I can wash a car with a cup of water, but I do that like once every once a month, you know, yeah. it's like, it's not a pain point, you yeah. know, it's like, where's the, you know, it's like there's different levels of pain point. There's really high pain points. And then there's those ones we live with for, like weight loss for years. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. It's, like, yeah, it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. The pile of the laundry at the end of the bed that hasn't folded itself and your daughters walk in the room to pick their socks out in the morning. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, we have a problem, right? <laughs> so well, no, no. <laughs> we we have a, a problem to solve. <laughs> so, so but that's the thing, right? It's a whole lot easier to get people to adopt that, adapt that, especially women, because they're shopping all over Amazon, especially yeah. women to do that. And and that's really where you know, if you can find that, if you can, if you can really assess that, then you have a better chance for success. So right. Brenda, let's uh, talk a little bit more about, you know, how, how that has, how that Amazon selling, how that has been for your life. Cause I know you have a son, you have some flex time and, but it, it, yeah. it is kind of intense. It's not exactly, you know, lay back and, you know, spend an hour yeah. a day. Right. So tell, well, you know, tell me a little bit how that's like, cause I would like them to be real about what it means. Yeah, because it really isn't a, you know, build it and they'll come business, you know, it may have been in 2013 and before that, but now it really is. Um, you need to keep your, your, your finger on the pulse of what's going on, because if you don't, there's somebody right behind you ready to take that spot. So even though Amazon's opened up a huge opportunity, um, it's opened it up for you and a million others just like you. So <laughs> you want to stay on top of that. Do you know the latest estimate as to how many uh, third party sellers there are at Amazon right now? You know, no, I don't. And, and it, I think it's hard because there's probably so many that are active or something. I think the term that I heard was that it was something like, you know, 100,000 active, but there might be like 300,000 on the platform. That might be around the numbers, but I, I don't have any hard data either. It's kind of a, it's and kind of a secret. <laughs> yeah, and there's several different business models um, being worked on Amazon. So for one, it's just, we want to sell crap and make money. 
you know, there's lots and lots of part, uh, third party sellers out there that are doing that, the, the Me Too products. Right. Um, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I, we, we have several brands that are similar to that, that we innovated and made our own and branded our own and so forth, but they're quality, you know, but there are a lot of people that are oh. selling type of qual different quality. So I'm just going to announce an upcoming episode because I have just gotten schooled from the Department of Labor about the pro hot goods problem on Amazon. So stolen products, counterfeit products, like the whole issue there. So I'm going to do an upcoming episode on it because it is scary. And a lot of those sellers are falling victim and not even knowing it. And that's wow. the really scary part. So um, they're getting kind of taken by the criminals in this process. And so we'll talk about that. But yeah, that model has a lot of pressure points on you. It's like, can you make enough money? Can you get it out fast enough? How much competition do you have? And now you have the right. problem is, are the products stolen? And I don't even know it. So yeah. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. I've heard some horror stories. We could share some, some, <laughs> Um, but then, there, then there's the model of um, people who have innovated their own products or their individual brands that they want to um, launch on Amazon. And those are the people Amazon love. That's what Amazon's moving towards. And even though right now you might talk to different people and they have different perspectives of um, why they should or shouldn't sell on Amazon. And that's going to be one of my office hours coming up is, um, is your product right for Amazon? So I'll address a lot of these issues a lot deeper back then, but or at that time, but um, it's, it's, there, there things like, you know, registered brands, um, they're trademarking, and there's all kinds of different things that Amazon is tools that they're putting into place to protect these brand owners and really wanting to build a business. It's still um, very gray. So there's, there's a lot of details in that. Like I said, we'll go over it more in the office hours, but um, it, it's the perfect place for brands to launch. And, and well, it's a perfect place to catch. I mean, this is the thing that I think people don't understand. And you do is that <clears throat> retail is an unassisted sale. And it really doesn't matter whether or not you're online or in store. People think, oh, but there's videos and there's text and there's all this. Yeah, but people don't read and don't do that stuff. They scroll really fast. Like, and they're like, oh, okay, let me check that out. Well, that's exactly how it works when you walk in the store, right? You're walking down the aisle and you're like, oh, that catches my eye. Okay, let me right, see that. Right, all the noise. Right? And so there's still noise in both places and there's no way to say, oh, well, you want this, let me guide you to that. And let me tell you all about my thing. No, they have to choose to do that. Right. And so if your product sings in that environment and there's this hyper, because in a digital world, there's hyper noise. And so it, you know, you come to the, with the purpose of, of shopping um, in you know, Target or something like that, and you will walk, but you will walk around and check it out. Like that's kind of a right. thing. But in Amazon, there's lots of people who go right into what they want and right out. Like, you know, you have that kind of, because you can. Well, and you to have that a, point, it, and to that point, anybody can create an Amazon listing. Um, they can open a seller account, pay their monthly dues and fill in the blanks for the listing. But I like to um, really drive home the point. It's real similar to building a website. You know, lots of people can go to Wix.com or all these other brilliant plug-in platforms where they can create their own website. But if shoppers aren't going to find you, if they're not going to convert into sales, what's the point? And I think that that's a, another message that needs to be clear is um, there's a right way to do your product on Amazon so that you can leverage these people that are coming in and out very quickly. You want to get in front of them. You want them to know that you're an option too. And that's right. where the sweet spot is in Amazon. People want to go to Amazon because here's a platform of sellers or of, of shoppers ready to buy a product. Right. And so it's like, Ooh, I don't have to spend millions of dollars to drive them to my website first to buy that one or two, you know, gadget. I can get in front of them and say, here's my option too. Do you want me? Yeah, and, I mean, it, it, it really has changed bringing a product to market. It's a very exciting time. Yeah. And, you know, I think also, too, that you bring up a good point is that, yes, there's shoppers there and they're searching for things, but they may not be searching for everything that you have or all the great features that you have. So you still have to brand build on the side. And that is right. something that the digital marketing tools have taught you about driving traffic in and Amazon rewarding that, that those are important things. And those still exist. This is what most people don't understand. Those still exist in the retail world. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you're paying 
you pay contribution to the retailer to make that happen for them to put you know, to feature you in what used to be the um, Sunday flyer, right? The right, coupons right. and stuff, right? And you, but you, you put in money into that to make that happen. So it was always there. Sometimes you just participated with the retailer, but if you were a valuable brand, like a Nike, like a, you know, like any of those top level brands, you would be driving traffic to their store to pick that up and to buy that right. there. And so they rely on that and they value that. And that's a lot of how they choose people. Amazon does the same thing, right? They give you more value if you drive more traffic to them as well. So you doing both different. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are things that I, I think they're going to be, pe people should be so amazed about all the different things that they can ask you because the perspective of being able to understand that from a product person, from really making sure that your stuff is getting out there and it's in the right place and it's circulating and it's proving that you have a product that people want to buy and making sure right. that you do that and position that there's a whole lot of questions along the way about how you do that. And there are so many options right. and lots of choices and, and you tried a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the, yeah, I've, I've tried a lot. Of them. <laughs> I mean, but that's the thing is, is that to be able to try them and, and not spend millions of dollars to try them and fail is huge. It's, it's really, huge. really huge. And I actually come from the perspective where I support, um, if you have a bigger vision and your time is spent in the bigger vision, um, outsourcing to some a company like ours to manage that for you and really become your product partner. And I, I use that term, um, on purpose because when we help our clients we really become their product partner because we have all of those perspectives my my skill level isn't just communicating to you about amazon i'm, I'm not narrow-minded on that because so many different factors play in and i could go you know it's my perspective that maybe your image is on your website or you know i might be able to offer some opinion broader view <laughs> absolutely i won't say that i'm an expert in those things we do have resources that we you know, keep the experts there, but um, we can certainly help define the, the lane a little bit more. What, what worked, what didn't work, and, and let's go for the 80% of what worked, right? <laughs> and I know the questions to ask, you know, well, what did you experience when you did this or that? You know, let's yeah. see what we try this. Well, I, and I think understanding that data that you talked about is so critically right. important because, I mean, up until, you know, really 2000 and I think 10 or 11 when they started like testing out the Amazon seller platform and then by, you know, really rolling it out 12 and 13 that, you know, no one had ever had that data, but the buyers, like right. even us, re even us but brands that were selling into mass market retail, we had the information on our products, but we didn't have the information on our competitors' products, unless you were playing in a commodity market and it was published in the commodity listings. Right. You didn't have any information. There hasn't been any. So it's incredible. And what I really find is shocking to me is that our big brands, a lot of them don't even mind that data. They don't value it. And it's, an, it's such an indicator and a bellwether of what will happen at retail that they're missing out. And so unless they have a large um, uh, e-commerce store themselves, like a Target does, um, they have no idea. Um, they have no idea how it's doing. And so I think that that, just understanding what to do with that is also part of today being a product seller and a merchant, right? Because you're really a merchant and that's what a merchant was good at, understanding what would sell and why people bought it and what belonged in their store, right? And you really right. are a mini merchant on Amazon. So understanding those numbers are critical. Well, and what's even more exciting is um, we can actually extract the data and find out an estimated monthly sales volume of the top competitors. So it's like, if we pull the top competitor that's a product similar to a, a product that you're feeling like you want to bring to market, and we say, oh, well, you know, the, they're on top pages and they're only selling 300 units a month, does that work into your plan? You know, and, and but it also then says, well, is there opportunity to, is their product not meeting all the needs that the consumer wants? So are they not marketing it? I mean, so, there, so that isn't necessarily the cap, but it's an estimation of what's where you'd be starting yeah. and then what what's going to take to build past that if that's your bigger vision and so you may decide you know i want to invest the time and money to make that the bigger vision or maybe that's not going to be enough for me and that's not really the plan i had let's move to something else 
Yeah, and you know, this is something that I really appreciate about you and Steve is that you will also tell someone, I think this isn't a good idea to be launching on Amazon. Like it, you, because of the numbers, it's not jiving with the idea that this is going to be a hard thing and this isn't the right. And so you don't just take clients, you, you're right. very careful about who you take and that you can make them successful and you can help them really achieve the goals that they are trying to achieve. Right. And, and sometimes those goals are simply market proof and visibility. And Absolutely. so, you know, there are reasons to do it, even though it's only selling 300 units. Um, but just because it needs to be selling and it's a little less right, effort yeah. if you've hired somebody to let you sell it there while you're right. working on the rest of your business. Absolutely. And, and we work with clients in all kinds of different ways. It isn't like, you know, um, we only have one package and you have to go all in. We meet clients wherever they're at. So they may just be in the, the infancy of creating this brand. And, and what I always advise clients is be on Amazon anyway. You may not have expectations of sales and we'll educate you as to what realistic expectations there are, but um, people are shopping on Amazon. And if they see you out in an event promoting your product, um, they're going to go home and they're going to look on Amazon and you better be there. You don't want to miss those sales. So if somebody's typing uh, looking specifically for your product, you want to at least have that presence. And it ought, to me, it's almost like um, brand credibility. You know, if somebody yes. went and didn't find a website on your product, they'd be like, hmm, this is questionable. I think people, consumers are almost doing that on Amazon too. So there's well, value. And retail in buyers do. This is the key that uh, most people don't hear. So if I'm a retail buyer and I'm buying, you know, kitchen gadgets or whatever that might be, I'm, and I um, see something in a trade publication, I go, oh, that's pretty cool. The first thing I'm going to do is Google them. And then I'm going to check them on Amazon. Like, so you're going to do these things. So do they have a website? Does it look okay? Do, are they selling on Amazon? And what are their ratings and rankings? Because I can look that up too, right? And so I'm going to look right. on there and go, ah, they look like they can deliver. Looks like they've been selling decent volume. They're in the right place because I found them in a trade publication. Like you look at those things and you go, hmm, okay, I'll take a meeting with them. And right. so, you know, that's the way you get in there. And that's how, the, I mean, that establishes a minimum level of credibility as you put that Absolutely. credibility is important but i right. think savvy shoppers care too like that's something i do whenever i see something on tv the first thing i do is amazon it and if it's not available on amazon i i, I will not buy it and there's a reason for that and that is because either their business model hasn't gotten themselves to the stage at which they can do that their plan isn't that which makes me always wonder is that a viable product is that a viable business and are they going to be around to service it or, you know, return it or whatever that is? So I won't buy, um, but I will wish list it. And sometimes they'll eventually show up on Amazon and it'll pop it up to you and you'll be like, oh, okay, now I'll buy this. <laughs> so you know, because nothing breaks my heart more than we're walking around a trade show and we talk to brand owners and it's like, hey, are you on Amazon? Oh, no, we're not going to sell on Amazon. It's like, oh, my God, can You're I just missing have it. <laughs> your time so I can explain to you why this is important, you know, because I think there's so many people that are fearful of the platform and rightfully so. There's a lot of, um, like I said, it's, it's like the wild, wild west out there. And, and um, unless you know how to play it, it, it may not be good experience for you. <laughs> so, well, and I think that you have to realize that some of that old school, like thought process mm -hmm. comes in to play and it's not really a thought is like, this is one tool in my overall retail plan right. for a bigger brand or for building a bigger brand. Right. It's like, Oh, if I'm there on that's the end. Well, that's not the way it is for no. most brands. It is the way for those that play in that mark digital marketing field. That's all they want to do because it's faster, it's easier, and then they'll move on to the other things. But and yeah. move on to the next product actually is what they usually do. So, well, so everybody knows. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, As go right. Say, everybody knows. I'm assuming everybody knows Shark Tank. But if you watch Shark Tank, what is the most asked question? What are your sales? <laughs> you know, so um, get in there and, and yeah. start seeing what the consumer wants and get those sales. Absolutely. Well, and there's a reason why every product doesn't, every product that is shown and makes it to the Shark Tank show is on Amazon when the show airs. Yeah. And every time the episode re airs, yep, every time the episode re airs, 
and they didn't do that the first season and it was it, and they lost sale they lost a lot of capture of audience so people would just say like yeah I, you know i'd buy that and so i'd send that as a gift to somebody and they lost a lot of of, of residual business and so they learned very quickly that that was an important component for them. And so they do not, if, if they cannot sell it on Amazon, you likely won't make it to the show. Right. I think and that's and there's very rare cases, like you're, you know, you're doing something industrial or something, but, but for the most part, if you can't be on Amazon, you won't make it to the show. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, and I just learned that from, uh, you know, that in, that it's still that case that it's very critically important. It's part of the screening criteria. I learned that from a couple of guys who were on the show recently. And so, um, you know, so that's, that says something right there. I mean, if, if a company that's all about, or, you know, a show that's all about inventors and innovation and new products puts you on Amazon as a critical part of their money-making prospects, then you need to as well. Well, think about it. I mean, it's like, okay, if, if somebody, you could create a, you know, like I said, a plug, plug in the blanks, create your own listing for $40 a month, you can have an Amazon seller account and you fill in the blanks and create your listing. I yeah. mean, now to do it good so that you capture organic traffic and convert the people that come to your listing, that's a whole different story. But the barrier to entry is $40. <laughs> you know, I know, it. really. It. It's so low. And and some classes though. So tell me a little yeah. bit about, cause I'd like people to hear that before we, before we close up here how, about how, how much time and, um, and money and energy you spend on educating yourself and keeping up on the changes and everything. And this oh, is my yeah. point to why we hire experts is we hire experts because the education of that will consume us instead of the business that we want to run. And so right. if your business is, is in this and you're educating yourself, then that's great. But if not, then maybe that's time for an expert. Right, exactly. Well, the initial investment was, you know, gosh, way back in 2013, I think I spent $1,500 for my original schooling. But since then, it's like, I always say, school's never out for me. You know, I'm constantly um, taking the next class. I'm involved in all kinds of different platforms and forums, keeping on top, because I don't have all the answers. I may not come across an experience, but somebody else had it, so I can learn from their experience and now service my clients even better. So you know, we have our own product line that we manage. So we're in the trenches doing the work, and um, we have great metrics as sellers. Um, but also we service our clients. And so we have a huge array of industries that we've been experienced in too. Broad um, categories, uh, you know, each category has its own difference that you learn, um, right? Yes. Yeah. There's so, there are barriers. Amazon likes certain things to be done a certain way for different category types. Um, there, there's all kinds of different issues with that, but we actually, we service um, people from the, we do it all completely for you, really become your brand partner, product partner to, we support people who want to do it themselves and educate themselves. And, and it's, it's like eating an elephant that one bite at a time, <laughs> you, you don't go in and just think you're going to be the expert in three months because you won't be, and you'll yeah, spend that's, all of your time learning and not doing. That's what I liked about the, the way you told me you had learned and the way you, you kind of recommend it to people is because, you know, going in there and spending the, you know, $10,000 course isn't necessarily a better thing because I'm sure the course is really great, but you're not capable of taking advantage of all of those things at once. You've got to like baby step yourself. It's not something you can just, you know, jump off the deep end into the deep end and, and be able to start swimming perfectly. It's right. not going to happen. It's not so. necessary. And I actually um, have now become involved with the group um, that I have been, um, I was a participant person, you know, way back You're talking when. about Jim Cockrum's group and Jim, and Jim Cockrum's group. I, I highly recommend it. They, um, that group's an integrity and it's a platform full of Amazon sellers at all kinds of different stages of their business. Um, it's a Facebook group that you can become a uh, member on. You just go and, and it's my silent team. Search <laughs> the Facebook group. I, I'm going to give a little backstory because the, the name is kind of awkward. Jim started years ago, I'm thinking like 15 years or more in e-commerce and he built his, his platform was about building a income stream behind the scenes, you know, with right. sales models and things like that. And then he stumbles on Amazon 
and um, has become all that and e-commerce and more. He's just a plethora of information and content. Yeah, but he's also he has hundreds of classes. Like it's and so, but that's what I like about it. Is what yeah. the price is now. Yeah, and they're not expensive. You got it all. It, no. Yeah. But, yeah. but the content is so deep and there's so many people, I'm now an official coach with the group and things. So I'm, I'm there on the platforms moderating and giving questions and answers and things too. Um, all kinds of exciting things, but there is no reason for somebody to spend thousands of dollars to get educated on Amazon. You'll, I, I highly re recommend. You know, so for so do, our, you, do you recommend to you, like, let's say, I'm an inventor and I invented this great product. I, I, I am going to hire somebody to sell it on Amazon for me. I'm not going to do that because I have lots of other plans with what I'm going to do with my business. But do you recommend them taking some kind of class to understand it? Like, is there some kind of orientation class? Do you recommend that, that that's a good idea to have a, a basic understanding of what's going on on Amazon? Um, I would come from two different perspectives on that. I guess it really depends on the individual because um, it's just like, the courses are all automated. So you really have to spend some time putting, you know, you're getting in there and digging through the, the information. So somebody could either get, you know, the education through consulting with the consultant and asking the questions and getting on, you know, you can go at it. It should be a little more customized for you, right? Right. So you could you could get the same education and, and information by going with the consultant and you'll get there faster. Or if you want to, if you're into it and you have the time to do it yourself and you want to dig deep into it, um, then you can spend the time. Again, the perfect analogy is like building a website. You know, you could train yourself to build a website. You could, and you would take that time and it would be a little bit slower process for you to get to the end result. Or you could hire somebody to do it for you and educate you on what it is you specifically need. Yeah, this is my hazard rule, uh, rules of hiring, which will be an episode all on its own. But the, yeah. you just hit on the rule is that if you're not going to build websites every day and day in and day out, and it's not going to matter for you. So if you're not going to sell on Amazon day in and day out, and someone else is going to manage that for you, and you know, it's not an expert core part of your business. It's not the only thing you're doing. And right. then why should you be doing that? You mean, but, it, but thinking it, about yeah. building a bigger brand, right? If you, you, you might have a consultant and a team, or you might have a person that's doing that within your company and brand. So it's never going to be you, the, the CEO <laughs> or the founder. Or But it could be. If you're the business model, you may be an inventor. You just love inventing and creating products. And this whole sales process is exciting for you to have your hands in it. Then absolutely, you know, for... 400 bucks, get educated or less. I mean, you could go on YouTube and watch some YouTube videos very easily to kind of see. Um, but, but, but be really careful with that because I just want to highlight that. If, if the videos are older, the, like 2013 or any of those kind of years, please, I mean, if, as long as they're just top level, they're probably okay, like kind of conceptual. Right. But if don't follow the details in any of those older ones. Be, I, I some of the people are still selling the same old model and it frustrates me that oh, because that yeah. model doesn't work and, and you will pay all those, all that money to eventually take their course and it still doesn't work. And, um, right. and they haven't updated and stayed, stayed with it to what happens in 2018. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Brenda, you are a font of knowledge and I'm so excited to have you. I was like, I was like making notes. Oh, we want to have a class on that. And we want to have <laughs> office hours on that. And I'm like making little notes over here because Share there's just so, me. <laughs> yeah, there's so many little topic areas that, that I think would be of great value, but your next one I think is the most important. And that really is just yeah. like, you know, is it right for Amazon? And I think that's a really, that's like a fundamental core, like the, should you do it model? <laughs> like, should you right. make it? Should you sell it? should you be on Amazon? And like, these are fundamentals. And so I'm so glad that that's going to be your first big office hour with us. Um, so you guys don't want to miss it. You want to make sure you have your questions prepared for her and you can either send them in um, through email into the platform. There's a form for that. Um, or you can just join on the call and ask them live and you can, you can ask in person and we'll turn on your video, or your audio, or you can just uh, type in the chat whatever works for you, but we really want you to pick Brenda's brain. That's why she's here. Um, please do, please do. I feel like this is my give back, you know, I'm so excited <laughs> to be able to offer these services to 
people like I was way back when. So, thanks for having <laughs> yay! Me. Well, and always don't forget that all of our experts are in the experts section of the membership site, so you can reach out to Brenda directly from there. You, her email and all her information, her website, and um, all kinds of details about her are right there. So don't miss that. And Brenda, thank you so much for becoming an expert on the Product Launch Hazards platform. Very exciting for for the future. Thank you for having me, Tracy. I appreciate it.